Do we look forward to it like a little tip of the cap the first time you see it? What do we what no are we chance. doing? I hate I hate no doing chance. that too. Like uh Carlos was trying to talk to me last year when I first, the first faced Carlos. You know, it's been a while. I never faced him in the big leagues and then faced him last year with the Giants a bunch and he was like trying to talk to me. I'm like, stop talking to me, man. And the same thing, I know Max isn't gonna try talking though. He's like all but he, when he's on the mound, he's all business. So maybe I'll try to talk to him because then maybe it'll piss him off. Hey everybody and welcome to the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and we want to welcome in one of our bosses, since he's one of our investors here, Trey Turner of the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, Trey, welcome back to your, I guess, to your own product. Hi. How we doing? How we doing? It's good to be here. We're good. Yeah, well, it's good to have you. Uh, first of all, I'm not just, I haven't moved or anything. I'm at the NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. I was going to ask you what the heck's going on back there. Yeah, this is, I haven't been booted out of my house after 25 years. So uh, don't worry, I'm safe. You know what? I was thinking about this. Like, which baseball player would be great at the Scouting Combine? And I'm thinking, your name, you're probably a top fiver. Uh, yeah, I mean, you put me on the bench press, probably going to probably gonna perform pretty poorly. But uh, as far as broad jump and, and, and the 40 and stuff like that, I kind of always wanted to run a, a legit 40. Um, so I think uh, when it comes to that, maybe I, maybe I could uh, hold my own. But uh, some of the other stuff, I don't know. I think there might be some other guys out there. Did you did you play football as a kid? Heck no. I uh I was I was scared. I'd get killed. I was so little when I was a kid. I was like, I think uh in high school I was five, four hundred pounds freshman year. So um I had a lot of growing to do. I would have I would have uh I would have died, so I stayed away from it. So you would have been a great DB though. Now that you've all grown up and you got your man muscles and stuff, you could have been one of those guys. You can backpedal, right? Yeah, I, I think that's uh, actually probably one of the hardest positions on the field. I mean, other than quarterback, I feel like that might be the hardest position. Um, you know, basically, you got to run backwards as fast as some other people run forward. So uh, I don't know if I want part of that, but I think uh, I could run. A, I could run a streak, fly route, uh, try to go for a catch a ball. About it. Other than that, um, I don't know if I could uh, if I could hold my own on that field. Yeah, but I remember we talked about this last time when you were on with Miggy Rowe. That yeah, you had never really been timed in the forty, huh? Not like officially. I uh, I ran two of them. Um, you know, I go to a guy in the off season. I do a lot of running and stuff and prepare for the season. I ran two of them a long time ago. I don't even know how many years ago. Probably maybe six, seven, eight years ago now. But uh, two of them, and I ran like a four two nine and a four two zero. But it's like hand watch, so. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what uh, what it would be officially. Probably a little slower than that. It's probably too low. But um, kind of always wanted to run one, uh, you know, just to see what it was. Uh, see what it was like. Dude, you just said a four two flat. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was on. It was it was on a clock. I don't know. Like I I think I I'm skeptical, and I'm the one that ran it. I you know I can't I can't claim that. All right, but let's say that even somebody's got a little itchy trigger finger here. Let's just say four three. I mean four three is flying. Yeah. Um that's why I, that's why I work on it. That's why I gotta steal those bases. I mean, I don't know. That's that's <laughs> kind of my game. So I, I hope I hope I'm down that low. That makes that makes me feel a little bit better. You have made quite the early impression on your new team and your new city. Um, is it true that you hit a car in your first BP session? Yeah. Uh, I'm a bad BP hitter, so I usually try to hit the ball the other way and try to, uh, you know, I don't know, work on things. And a lot of times it ends up in, with some foul balls in the stands. And yeah, that that was that was first day. I haven't hit BP since then, so I cash in for the year. That's probably my one and only session. And uh, so now it's a little little something for everyone to watch the rest of the year and kind of hold above me. Did we find out whose car it was? But we did not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I got no complaints, no bills. Nothing showed up in my locker. So I'm just going to kind of not try to talk about it and see if it just goes under, sweep it under the rug and uh, get by with one. See, now, there, there's part of me. There's part of me as the dad that says you should have left a note on the windshield. Well, I mean, there's videos. So they know, they kind of know it was me. Oh, got it. Right. They I mean, track you down. That, that's proof in itself so um i don't know i, I like i said i got no complaints so far so i'm, I'm gonna hopefully not get any uh, any bills or anything like that 
Yeah. I'm just kind of worried that they're going to seek you out in like 25 years and then charge you interest. And God knows what that builds. Yeah. Like. Inflation, all that stuff. That's yeah. That's that's for people smarter than us. though. that's that's a lot of math going on right there. That's a good call. And once again, as we all talk about a John Boy, this, we don't have any math pods here. So let's just no. move on to the next great thing. Um, is there a different feeling in camp? This is now your fourth organization, if you will, third major league team. Is it a different feel? Because it, when I watched the Phillies play last year, it felt like it was just a bunch of boys hanging out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what it is. I, I mean, I think they're all different, and not in a good or bad way. You know, I mean, everything's different. Every clubhouse is different with staffs and the team you play for. But, um, I, you know, it's been awesome. You know, so far it's been great. It's nice getting a chance to see uh, some guys that I played with in the past, coaches I, you know, worked with in the past and, and meeting new people as well. So it's been a lot of fun. Like you said, I mean, they had a blast actually. And they, we're still having fun right now. I mean, it's it's a good group of guys. But, um, you know, I think everything, every year, it, spring training is a little different. There's so many moving parts in baseball. You don't think about it, but there's new guys coming in and and uh, and leaving all the time um, just with the business of the game. So it, it's a little bit different than last year, but, um, I mean, I'm having a ton of fun. Um, you can see why, uh, you know, they had a blast last year and we're just trying to kind of continue that and, and um, go out there and get on the golf course, been golfing a little bit with these guys, getting to know them. Mm. Um, hanging out off the field. I think that's super important. We've been doing that. So um, it's been fun and, and uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. Whose money have you been taking? Uh, I, I don't know if I should. Uh, oh, yeah, you should put that out in the open. Um, it's, you know, it's a little give and take, you know, I, I'm not I'm not the best golfer, but uh, JT is really good at golf. Uh, Kyle and, and Bryce and Stott have been out there a little bit. Uh, Reese has been out there. We've been uh been doing our fair share of uh, taking each other's money. So when Reese hit, what, hits one like 320, does he slam the club down like he did last year in the playoffs? Does <laughs> no. he continue no, that? No, I, I haven't seen that. Usually when he hits the trees, he gets a little frustrated. I haven't seen a club throw yet. Um, but the trees are in danger sometimes on the, on the right side of the fairway. Uh, but he's mm-hmm. he's got a he's got a consistent game. He doesn't swing that hard. He's uh, he's a uh, kind of a um, I don't know. I don't know what you call it, but he's a kind of consistent golfer where he's not, he's not bombing it down the fairway and, and he's hitting a finesse it player. He's, he's, he's trying to score. Yeah. He's trying to score. First thing. I'm going to be really pissed. If you tell me that Schwarber doesn't swing out of his golf cleats. No, he does. He, he does. He, uh, he blamed it on his, uh, he got a new golf club. He blamed it on his, his old one that he wasn't hitting well. And now he's got a new one. So he hits it better. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's always something with him, but, uh, he definitely swings, and uh, he he's actually pretty good. He's got he's got uh he's got a good game. I loved, you know, you guys have this phenom pitcher, Andrew Painter, who's 19 years old. I cannot believe it. He's got a legitimate shot of making the back end of your rotation here. He actually threw in his first game yesterday, which was kind of cool. Uh, but in BP against you guys, you know, live live abs, Schwarber took him deep after striking out, and then rode the pony the whole bit. Mm-hmm. Y'all must have just died after that. Well, the funny the funny part is Kyle was wearing him out the day before, you know, saying, when are you going to pitch? When are you going to get on the mound? You're just going to throw bullpens all spring. Come on, let's go. And, and you know, he's telling us, yeah, I can't wait to face him more. I can't wait to face him more. So he was wearing him out the day before, which is which was hilarious just to watch because, you know, you got to give the young kids a hard time. Uh, you know, even if it's just a little bit, you got to give them a hard time when you can. So. Um, you know, there was that back and forth going on. And then, uh, you know, Kyle obviously did what he did and he'd let him have it. And I think that's, you know, that's the beauty of Kyle is he doesn't care who you are. Uh, if you got, you know, 15 years in the big leagues or you're 15 years old, he, if, uh, you know, if you're, you're on the field competing with him, he's going to, he's going to let you hear it. So that was pretty funny, um, watching that. And then, uh, you know, there's a couple other young guys there with him. So I think they kind of learned that, uh, you know, don't mess with Kyle and, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, like you said, he, he can make a rotation because he's pretty special, but we got to keep him humble, keep him working, and uh, he's got a, lot, a long way to go. What you were, what 22 when you made your show debut? Yeah, I think, yeah, 20, yeah, one or 22. Yeah, do you imagine being 19 and having a no. shot? No, absolutely, not. couldn't imagine. Yeah, I couldn't imagine, you know, 
going from basically high school to the big leagues, right? I mean, he's, I don't, I don't know how many minor league seasons he's had, maybe one or two, but um, basically going from high school to the big leagues, I think is, is crazy. And I couldn't, I couldn't imagine what he's doing. Well, today's episode of the Chris Rose Rotation, sponsored by our buddies over at Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. In fact, Shady Rays offers a world-class product that's just as good as any massively expensive pair you've ever worn. Durable frames, extremely clear optics as well. And that's not all. Here's what I love the most. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. So if you lose or if you break a pair, even on day one of ownership, they will send you a brand new pair. There are no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase them. I mean, are you like me? How many times a year do you roll into your car and you sit down and snap? You broke in your favorite pair of sunglasses. Once again, Shady Rays is there to take care of you. And exclusively for our listeners here, Shady Rays is giving out the best deal of the season. I want you to go to ShadyRays.com. Use the code word ROSE. That's my last name. 50% off two plus pair of polarized sunglasses. I'm going to repeat that. Code word ROSE at ShadyRays.com. Two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. You're going to get half price? You kidding me? And if you break them, no questions asked, you're getting a new pair of sunglasses? Hey, summer months are right around the corner. We want you looking your best, feeling your best. For the right price, we're going to take care of you. ShadyRays.com. All right, so obviously you're making the adjustment to a new club, but you're about to leave and join America's club. Team USA, I know that you you signed up for it immediately. Um, are there nerves? Are there is there excitement? Are there certain dudes you're looking forward to hanging out with that you haven't been able to in your big league career? Um, yeah, as far as nerves, not yet. I think when the games come, I think those those things kind of come up. Um, but as far as right now, no, I'm not nervous or or anxious or any of that. I, I don't even think really when you're playing, um, that's the right word either. It's just gonna be a ton of adrenaline and um excitement. And uh, you know, I think that's sometimes sometimes can be nervous and sometimes it's just, you know, fun. So I think that'll happen during the games. But um as far as just meeting everybody, yeah, I think anybody that you you know, you don't get to share a clubhouse with regularly. I think if you can, I think that's awesome. Um, you know, obviously Mike Trout, but then you get to see some guys that um that you played with before, some Mookie and, and some of the other guys too. Um I worked out with a little bit in the offseason goal Schmidt and Arenado. They're great, great dudes. So I think we just got a good good group and uh I know we want to win. So um, you know, Mike said it early on that we're we're going for the win and we're not just going out there to, you know, put on the jersey. We want to kind of win the whole thing. So um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, you, you know, your leader of the kind of face of baseball is saying that. I think we uh, we're all behind that, and um, I'm looking forward to just kind of sharing it with everybody and seeing what everyone brings to the table. I uh, I had my buddy and and uh, Team USA uh, manager Mark DeRosa on recently. So how did the discussion go down? Did you reach out to him and was like, "Hey, pencil me in"? Did he call you? How did the whole process work? I actually went through. Um, I went through my agent because they weren't, they were asking a bunch of people and I figured, you know, I was hoping at least they would ask me because I had played team USA before. Um, and I was hoping they'd ask me. So I kind of went through my agent like, yeah, uh, you know, I want to play, but I think the, you know, the phone call was kind of held off at least on me early on because I was going to be a free agent and they didn't know free agency, how that was going to happen. So they were asking a lot of guys that were kind of already uh, under contract for the next season. And at least early on they were. And so I tried like kind of weaseling my way in there and, and and just, you know, saying I wanted to be a part of it because, you know, I, I think a lot of people want to do it, but you don't really know the protocol. You don't know if, you know, do you ask to somebody ask you kind of that dancer that you're talking about. So I mentioned to my agent and then uh, Tony Regan's called me um, like a day or two later and, uh, you know, asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. And I said, heck yeah. So um, I didn't talk to Mark until maybe a month ago. We started talking about, you know, kind of what he expects, you know, of me or at least of players and playing time and different things like that and just being prepared. So um, early on, I just kind of pushed my way in the door and just hoping that they would accept me. But, 
yeah, talked to Mark, uh, you know, about a month ago, and he's he was awesome. I love talking to him. He's a um, good dude, full of energy, and I'm excited that he's, uh, you know, managed this club. I'm sure the conversation went something like, hey, we need you. We need guys like you're a guy. That's a, like that's, that. that's a pretty good impression right there. I, I don't yeah. know, have you done that for him before? He had, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that's what happens when you work with a buddy, yeah. you know, for right. almost a decade. You pick that, up the little nuances. That was pretty good. I like that. that was, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we had him on, and he did let us in on a little secret that they hired one of the Dodgers analytics guys um, to help them out. And D. Rose said, hey, listen, just – and he said there's been a lot of pushback, give and take, all sorts of discussions, which he has been fascinated by. But he said, give me your perfect – line up against a right hander. If we're gonna see a right hander from Great Britain right out of the gate, I want I want you to give us our perfect lineup. So I want you to listen to how the discussion went down. And he had Jeff McNeil leading off and Trey Turner towards the bottom of the order. And he goes, well this is just based on raw data versus a right hander coming off last year. And I said, okay, but now you're Trey Turner. You just signed for 300 million with the Phillies. You're a guy. And you walk in that door, no offense to Jeff McNeil, but you see him leading off and you're batting eighth or ninth. You pissed off? He goes, yeah. I said, do you think you're getting the best version of Trey Turner tonight? He goes, probably not. I said, then why Why would you do that? You have to have th that blend. But how do you handle this? Trey Turner's I leading off. What are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Just throw him right out the window. Just don't even look at the numbers. Just throw him right out the window. No, I, I, I mean, that's what our games turn into. A lot of, you know, a lot of people can take it real far, you know, one way or the other way or not look at the numbers or look at every number, but, um, you know, everyone's kind of got their own answer. Uh, I think uh, for me, it's going to, it's going to be tough. I mean, you can make an argument, Jeff, I think Jeff won the batting title last year. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if he's not leading off or if he's, you know, batting eight and nine, I'm sure he should be just as mad as anybody too. So, um, we got a we got a tough lineup. We got to put those egos aside because um, we got a lot of good players. But um, I think you know, going through this talk right now, I think I have a lot of uh, homework to do on Vero and see if I can push some buttons and see if I can get get some uh, <laughs> stories and some uh, some reactions out of them because I think uh, I think those those possibilities seem endless at this point. Oh yeah, they do, and he'll have stories for days. By the way, really get him riled up on his uh, on his Dallas Cowboys. That'll um, really, yeah, rough go for him for the last you know five, six, seven years, or quarter century, or yeah, or longer. I, I'm not old enough to to say that, but I know I know it's, it's been <laughs> uh, it's been rough for him the last few years. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll use that one for sure. Hey, all bullshit aside, if you walked into the clubhouse and you were hitting eight be a little pissed yeah well i mean i would hope i would hope everybody would be i hope whoever's hitting eighth is a little like damn you know like that's that's the that's baseball that's competing that's i don't know that's why i play the games like i want to be just as good as anybody right or, or i want to be you know the best you know version of myself whatever it is and if i'm hitting eighth you know, i don't feel like you kind of you're taking a little dig at me obviously but i don't necessarily expect to hit you know, top of the order type deal, but yeah, I think uh, I think you could take that as a, a little uh, little chip on the shoulder going forward. You heard it from your manager; you're hitting one. By well, the way, yeah, we have it. Then, then my former team's bat me eighth, so I mean, what the heck? You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to have a conversation with her. What's going on? Because he he's pissed that you left. That's all. It, you yeah, know, he, he, maybe he, he punched it. in those numbers. Yeah, changed the numbers a little bit. Changed the numbers a little bit. Yeah, no, I think. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun getting to know these guys and, uh, you know, talking to D-Row and all that. So I'm, I'm excited. So, it, you know, I think D-Row came out and said, it, listen, in pool play, you guys are both going to get your at-bats. I think it's you and Tim Anderson are the shortstops, the primary shortstops on this team. He goes, but, you know, you know how it is in spring training. You either hit 500 or you hit 100. And he said, "There, with the exception of probably Mookie and Mike Trout and maybe one or two other guys, I'm rolling with the hot hand. If Tim Anderson's the hot hand, you're going to be okay if we get to pass pool play and be a cheerleader? Yeah, I told him that. I kind of like cut him off and said it before um, he said it. Is you know, he said, you know, you're playing this game, he's playing this game back and forth, back and forth, but then going forward, hot hand. And I, I was like, look, I don't expect to play every game. I want to win. So, like, if I'm, if I suck, 
I mean, get whoever in there that is playing well because I think you know, it's too short. It's what six, seven games at most. I think you know, like I think it's a short period of time. I I, I have no problem. Um, you know, rooting those guys on. Obviously, I want to be the one playing. I want to be um, in the middle of it. But I, as, as does Tim, as does everybody else. So if, if Tim's our guy, I, you know, I want him to to be out there and and playing and trying to win this thing. So um, I think you know a lot of us have that mindset, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, especially when you got so many good players in the same clubhouse. If we can kind of buy into that, I think that helps out a lot. And I know I'm on board with that. And um, man, I I want to play, but. I understand. I understand what he has to do as a as a manager. I understand. Um, you know, there's other good players in that clubhouse, so I'm fine with it. All right, more of the show is still coming your way, but first, have you ever thought about owning a sports team? You're like Rose, shut your pie hole. I don't run that deep, man. There's no way I could afford that. <laughs> Not true. Because today's episode is brought to you by our friends of the Tropical Hockey League. The Tropical Hockey League. It is a professional roller hockey league where all the teams will be owned by you, the fans. No joke. It is located along the Gulf Coast. It is known as the THL. It is the first-of-its-kind league of entirely fan-owned teams. Now, what they're looking to do is make the game of inline hockey faster, more free-flowing, and exciting. In fact, the THL will provide affordable, accessible fun for people of all ages. And you can become an owner today just by investing. That's right. By investing in a team, you can become an owner and have a vote in the way that the team is run. We all love playing fantasy sports. This is the real deal. So go do this today. Check out their We Funder page today. Become a part of sports history. And then you can be an owner in the Tropical Hockey League. Just one little thing. I want to be a guest. Can you get me a ticket? Go do it today. You've been on one of these teams before, a decade ago, as a college kid. You represented Team USA, and it was guys like you and Bregman, and I think your college teammate Carlos Rodon was on that team. Um, how much fun was that experience? Where, where'd you Where'd you end up playing and stuff? Oh, I played all over. Yeah, it's, it's crazy looking back at them. They don't uh, They don't miss. You know, there's so many uh, big leaders on all those teams, uh, pitching. Um, there's style right there. Yeah, it's it's um, it's been crazy just to see how those teams kind of grown up and evolved. Matt Chapman, Bradley Zimmer, all these dudes. But um, yeah, we went to my first year. Um, we went to Cuba and played a five game series against the Cuban national team, which was crazy. Um, a lot of uh, guys that have come over in the last you know five, six, seven, eight years were were over there. We played against them when I was you know nineteen. And um, I think we ended up losing in the series, but we won the first game, and they were kind of shocked because we had a bunch. We were a bunch of kids, right, going in there, and uh, we were playing against thirty-year-olds and, and veterans and um, really good baseball players. And we won the first game, and then they kind of kicked their butts after that, if I remember correctly. But then uh, the second year, I got a chance to play again, and we went to Japan, and we went to um, we went to the Netherlands, or maybe we went to Netherlands the first year too. But we've been to the Netherlands, Japan, and Cuba. Um, and uh, those experiences are unbelievable. Just playing in tournaments and series and um, just seeing different cultures. Japan was really cool. We played a five game series in five different stadiums and they had like an all dirt infield and then they had a turf field and then they had a normal field. And like, they just, the amount of variety they had over there was really, really cool. Um, I, I kind of want to go back because I just feel like I was like a little kid and I didn't really know much and didn't know what to experience. And I feel like I kind of left a lot on the table, but. Um, going through those things are, you know, kind of like tournaments and tournaments and experiences that I'll never forget. I, I loved it. Japanese baseball is unlike anything else, right? Yeah. No, they had a, they had, I think they had a band on each side. So whenever you're on offense, your band kind of plays, you know, music. And then, and then when you go out to the field, they switch over. They got to go out of cool, cool things going on. And um, I think it's just fun to experience those different cultures, you know, whether it's Latin America um, Europe, Japan, whatever it may be. I think um, it's just fun to experience some of those things. So you said you went you went over to the Netherlands. Were you in Amsterdam? Uh, no, we were we were like 30, 40 minutes from Amsterdam. We, we uh, One day we had an off day and we could take a train ride over there. So a bunch of guys took a train ride over there. But I think it was Holland, maybe. I'm, I'm kind of blanking on it. But um, we were not we were not in Amsterdam. Yeah, so I... I uh... You probably don't. You're not old enough to remember 
NFL Europe. I doubt, you know, there were teams. Yeah, there were football teams over there and I went and called a couple games. So we Amsterdam was our home base mm -hmm. for two or three weeks. And it was that place is insane. Now, I was, you know, it's eye -opening. I was a married guy. Yeah, it's, it's eye opening. Eye -opening. <laughs> I mean, look, everybody always said, did you go to the red light district? Yeah, I didn't walk in anywhere, but you have to go to the red light district. It's like. Yeah. yeah, it's the number one touristy thing you do that you guys, well, y'all went, walked through. Yeah, no, it. we did exactly what you just said. We walked around, and I think we were all kind of, like, really surprised. We were like, wow, this mm -hmm. is crazy. And then I think we went to, like, a bar or two or something like that. But um, mm -hmm. there was uh, there was a lot going on there, and it's it's a it's a crazy place. But I think you got to experience it, but you got to be careful. It's, it's, it's wild. So you were 19 when you were there? Yeah. Or 20? 20. Yeah. <laughs> It's, Sorry, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, I stayed away because that place is that place is crazy. Place is crazy. You can get a little lost over there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I imagine though, it's probably a great bonding experience. I just saw the picture of Schwarber wearing his catcher's gear, looking like a total yeah. goofball, and during all that stuff. Like yeah. who was who was the guy that? There's always like one nutball on every team when you're that young. Was he it? I mean, yeah, him. Uh, I can't really. I'm like, I I played twice, so the teams kind of blend together a little bit. Um, I I hung out with Carlos a lot. Obviously, he was uh, so Kyle and uh, Sam Travis were both on the same college team, so they kind of had that connection already. So, you know, when you already have those friendships going into the you know the team, and you kind of know somebody. Like my first year, I I knew nobody. I didn't know names or anything, and. Um, so you don't, you don't know much, but if you have that one friend that you can kind of still have those jokes with, right. That's kind of how you stick with. So I remember Kyle and St. Travis were from Indiana. Um, and, uh, so me and Carlos, I got, got along pretty well with them, but it's just fun, uh, meeting all those dudes from all over the country and, uh, some are crazier than others and different and West coast baseball, East coast baseball, all that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it's fun, but yeah, I, I feel like. I feel like I've played with Kyle for forever. And even coming here, I feel like I played with him forever. And then I look back and I'm like, I played with him for like three months with Washington. Yes, City. Exactly. And then we both got traded. So like, I'm like, man, I feel like we're boys, but, uh, you know, we really haven't played that much together. Two summer balls, 10 years ago, 10 years ago. And then a couple months with the nationals, but, um, you know, you kind of keep those relationships for forever. You know, it's funny when, when the trade went down between Washington and LA, Nobody knew your name was going to be attached to that thing. Everybody was focused on Scherzer. Is he going to San Diego? Where is he ending up? And all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, my God, the Dodgers just got Trey Turner, too. Were you, were you like, knocked off your chair when that happened? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I remember in the beginning of the beginning of the week, I think the deadline was on Friday, like Monday, Tuesday, I was going back and forth like, they're not going to trade me. And then, I, and then some will come out, they're like, they might trade. And I'm like, they're going to trade me. And then, no, oh, they're not going to trade me. I just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then, you know, kind of like you said, it's like, you don't think it's going to happen. You get down to that last like hour or whatever it is. And then it happens and you're like, you know, kind of hits you. And, um, you know, blessing and a curse. I had, I had COVID at the time. So, um, obviously nothing you want to experience, but I had some time to sit at home and, and, and like get my stuff in order. Max had to leave immediately. Like I think the next morning. And I think that's some things that are lost with trades is like, you just got to pick up everything and leave immediately. I at least had, you know, maybe a week or something like that to get ready and, and try to get my house in order. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a definite like shock to the system. And like when we, I don't know, it's kind of blindsided me a little bit, but I, I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever ready to get traded. Right. I don't think, even if you kind of like think you might get traded, you don't know where, what city, what team. So it's just, it's a lot to take on, but uh, I think it worked out great. I and mean, I had a lot of, a lot of fun in LA. Um, we played some good baseball and, uh, you know, we didn't win a championship, but it was, it was a good time with those guys. I learned a lot. Um, they're smart over there. And, um, you know, I think it definitely helped me out as a player. Did you ever end up uh, autographing that uh, jersey for that young fan that came to the Dodger playoff game? I think his name is Juan, Juan Soto. That wore your jersey you ever signed that thing uh, that never heard of him never heard of him oh oh that kid uh he's good at baseball i think or what's he doing he... no i uh, don't know uh, those are my those are my guys right there kevin and uh Juan. i didn't know that was happening so he kind of caught me off guard uh with that and then they were 
you know, the funny part is they were booing him. And then he stood up with my jersey on, and then they had to start cheering for him. So it was it was kind of funny because, you know, he's always in L.A. He's always doing his, you know, shimmy shakes and whatnot, the shuffle and stuff. And, uh, you know, the fans obviously noticed. But, um, yeah, he caught me off guard, and it was, uh, it was pretty cool to see. I don't think um, I've ever seen, you know, a teammate at least do that, you know, do something nice like that for me. So it says a lot about him. He's a, he's a, he's a special person. And, um, you know, it was fun playing against him over there with Padres. We went from, you know, being boys on the same team kind of rivalry. Um, and we were trying to, you know, talk through it a little bit and, and uh, see each other on the base paths and whatnot. And it was fun, but uh, that was a pretty cool moment. Does his next contract start with a four or five? I don't know. I, I know it's a lot of zeros, so I don't know what it starts with, but I know it's a lot of zeros at the end. Uh, he's, he's a good player, and he's young. So, I mean, he's going to help somebody out, and uh, I think he, he'll be just fine on the, on the money. Um, How did Philly fan treat you when you were in Washington? Uh, just like anybody, they just yell at you. You know, I didn't get a ton of booze. Um you know, I always thought it was pretty funny. They would boo uh, Jason Worth. Only when I, early in my career, J- Jason would go back there, and he loved it. He'd be in the dugout or on deck, and they'd boo him, and he just welcomed it, and he loved it. Um, but, yeah, I didn't get a lot of boos, just, you know, a lot of trash talk, obviously. But that's, you know, that's what makes Philly, Philly great. And I think it's a home field advantage, man. You saw that last year in the playoffs. I think that was a big uh, home field advantage for him. And um, hopefully I'm on the other side of that. Hopefully I'm not getting – getting crushed, but, um, you know, we, uh, we love it. We, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun, you know, being on the other side and, and, um, you know, I enjoy playing there. I'm, I imagine when you guys got bounced early, sometimes it's hard to watch the rest of the postseason. Were you watching when Harper hit his homer? So I, uh, I would like go in and out, like kind of, you're saying like, Oh, Oh, it's on watch, you know, 30 minutes, whatever. And then kind of, I don't watch every second of every game, but, I watched a lot. I think I watched game one of the World Series. I don't think I watched a ton of that Padres series when he hit that homer. Obviously, I feel homer. Um, I don't think I was watching then, but I mean, just the replay is electric in itself. Um, I could only imagine being in the stadium. But yeah, just those those two series, Padres and um uh the World Series were were incredible. And um I think that was that was definitely a you know a positive signing here is just seeing that atmosphere and um, you know, early in my career, you know, the Phillies weren't weren't great. Um, and just to see them that that build up and them get and the fans get rewarded and owners should get rewarded for you know those tough years early on. And then now uh, you know, Bryce signs and, and more people sign and uh, that's what you kind of want in that rebuild is to to rebuild and do it right and get those good players and um Zach Wheeler and now Aaron Nola with the pitching staff. So um they've been rewarded and I think uh, you know. The fans have been rewarded, and, and you know, hopefully, we can keep this thing going for a long time and and play some good baseball for him. I know we talked a little bit about Bryce the, the previous time you were on. He has yet to make his appearance. I think in Philly's camp, obviously, he had the offseason surgery. We won't see him until midseason, unfortunately. What is the one thing we don't know as baseball fans that you do, having been his teammate before? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think so. I know people aren't going to see it this way, but I think after playing playing with, uh, you know, the Dodgers, there's, there's only two famous baseball players I've ever played with, like famous. Uh, yeah, everyone thinks, you know, baseball, baseball players are famous, but we're really not. And only two famous players, and that's Bryce and Mookie. Those two guys, I mean, they have so much to deal with. Um, they're in the spotlight so much more, and it's just a different – it's a different atmosphere for them. And I, I tip my cap, they have to do a lot of things that I, I don't love doing, or I don't necessarily, you know, want to do as a player. You, you want to play the game. You want to go home to your family. And those guys, they're just asked so much to do so many different things and be perfect all the time. And and those two guys have been really, really good um, throughout their careers. And um, I think they're great for the game and they're, they're, they're awesome dudes. I love playing with both of them, but I just think, man, he's, he's famous. And it's, it's kind of, it's, it's weird. It's, it's different. You know, you know, you think you make a lot of money or you do this and people recognize you, but like they're on a whole nother level. And um, it's impressive how they, they deal with it as, you know, human beings and um, just be, you know, a good person every step of the way. All right. I got a couple more cause I know you're busy, but um, 
is it fair to say there was that report about the Padres offering you more money and you ended up in Philly? Is it fair to say that if San Diego was located where Tampa is, that you would have more strongly considered it? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, that wasn't, I mean, I, I, everyone kind of blew that out like crazy. Like San Diego is a beautiful city. It's awesome. Hell yeah, um, it is. I mean, it's amazing. The atmosphere there was awesome. And just, I don't know. There's some things you can't explain. There's some things you can't put money on. There's, you know, it's just hard. It's just like kind of a gut feeling type deal. So, um, yeah, I would have, that would have been great. Um, but I don't know if I might have made the same decision. So I don't know. Like it's hard to it's hard to you know say it was that easy or this was the one thing or that was the one thing. It's just you know for me, I just tried taking it all in and and you know you have your conversations with your family, um, talk to you know obviously my wife a ton, but my parents, her parents, and just get their points of view because um, you know a lot of times, especially with my dad, he thinks about things that you know I I would never think about. So you know you rely on him a lot and. Um, like oh yeah man that makes a lot of sense or you know you're you're worried about something and he's like don't worry about that because of this and it's just nice having those conversations so i don't know what would have happened um but um i think you know the decision we made i'm i'm super happy with that I, I, it was not fun for me i hate it for you to see i hate like doing the dance i hate telling people no i like i just wanted to you know make the right decision and um i think it worked out really well so um i don't know I don't know if that was the number one thing. I don't think it necessarily was, but, um, you know, being back on the East Coast, we're definitely happy about. How many times did Bryce call you? He actually kind of left me alone a little bit, which was, which was, which was good, smart. I mean, I talked to him early on, um, asked about the staff and, and different things. And, you know, if I had any questions, he obviously answered them. But um, the cool thing was I, I, I told my agents, uh, you know, I wanted to sign here. They make the phone call, and I, I swear within like a minute, Bryce called me. I'm like, how the hell did Bryce find out already? And he was just so excited, and um, him, his wife is good friends with my wife, so um, they were on the phone, and they were just super ecstatic. But it was it was kind of crazy how quickly you know I got that phone call from him. So that that was pretty cool. That was um, you know just shows you you know how bad he wants to win and um, how excited he was. So um, that was that was pretty neat. All right, two more. How many uh, bases are you going to steal with the new rules? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how easy it's going to be or how much easier it's going to be. Mm. Part of me thinks it was going to be the same, but now I'm like, I don't know. There might be a lot of free bases in there. So um, I don't know. I don't put numbers on things. Hopefully it's – You have a number in your mind. You have you have to have a number. No, I don't Come on. because – I, what if what if it's fifty? What if it's sixty? What if it's seventy? I don't know. It's not that much. That's that's way too many bases. But um, that's just a lot of a lot of sprinting and sliding and wear and tear and all these things. And you know, I want to play every game every day. So um, I don't know. I, hopefully, it's going to be a lot, but I don't know how much. I forget. Are you a double oven mitt guy now? Uh, now I am. I feel ridiculous out there. I'm get like my first game. I did it. And then I got like 50 questions after the game about the double the double oven mitt. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, but I just hate it. I'm like sitting out there, uh, Ricky Bobby, don't know what to do with my hands. I said it the other day, is I feel like Will Ferrell. I had I messed the movie up. I thought it was Step Brothers, but it was uh, Talladega Nights. And uh, yeah. I just feel ridiculous and I hate it. And I hate how long it takes. Like I watch other people. I'm at shortstop. I watch other people do it first base. I'm like, oh, that's stupid. And now I'm the one doing it. So I'm 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 right there with him. I got to shut my mouth now. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a double oven oven that guy. Finally, I think there's one guy that you haven't faced in the big leagues that's been around for a while that you finally get a chance to swing it against. You know who that is? I do. I do. And he's probably going to punch me, and that's fine. But if I get him one time, he's never going to hear the end of it. And I promise you that. I hang out with Max a lot in the off season. I think I faced him one time in a in a live at bat. I just ambush, hit the first fastball, base it up the middle, just just do things to kind of like poke at him, really. Um, so it's going to be fun that back and forth. But yeah, if I get him one time, I every off season for forever, I'm just gonna I'm gonna crush him. He's he's gonna get me though. I, I promise you that. It's uh it's it's not gonna be easy, but um, it's gonna be fun. He's a he's a freak. 
on days that he pitches, isn't he? He's one of those guys that's just on a different planet. Well, I said this when I got when I got traded with him. It was hilarious because you know Max, like I said, I hang out with him. Uh, he's one of my buddies, whatever. And uh, the Dodgers were scared of him. Like when he first got there, they were like, you know, tiptoeing around, didn't want to like say the wrong thing. And I just, I'm sitting there watching, like I can see people, you know, interacting with him like cautiously, and I'm just laughing because they were so scared of him. And you know, on the day he pitches, he's he's intense, but then on the other days, he's just a normal dude. He's funny. He's you know, make fun of himself, and he likes to have a good time. So uh, he's kind of got that that little bit of a split personality. But um, yeah, he's going to be grunting and, and doing all his shenanigans on the mound. But I watched it for. I don't know what seven years, eight years, uh, played with them. So I'm used to it. Doesn't uh, doesn't bother me. He uh, the guys always told me he was such a pain in the ass. The four days he didn't pitch, he couldn't sit still in the dugout. He's like this ADD kid that's six yeah. years old. He's always got a ball in his hand. He's always moving around. He's always you know talking this, talking that. He's uh, strategizing for whatever it is off the field, on the field. It's uh, it's always something with him, but. And that's why he's that's why he's max. That's why he's uh, done what he's done in the game, and uh, that's why he's a good teammate. We look forward to it like a little tip of the cap the first time you see him. What are we? What no are we chance. doing? I hate I hate no doing chance. that too. Like uh, Carlos was trying to talk to me last year when I first, first faced Carlos. You know, it's been a while. I never faced him in the big leagues, and then facing him last year with the Giants a bunch, and he was like trying to talk to me. I'm like, stop talking to me, man. And the same thing. I know Max isn't gonna try to talk to me though. He's like all he, when he's on the mound, he's all business. So. Maybe I'll try to talk to him because then maybe it'll piss him off, you know. But uh, I don't, I don't like that that back and forth. I don't know. I just want to play, and, and then after the game's over, I'll, I'll uh, at least talk about whatever you want. It's awesome. Well, listen, man, it's great catching up with you. Best to you and your entire family. Uh, enjoy your new home in Philly. Enjoy the World Baseball Classic. We will all certainly be watching. It's going to be a ton of fun. And um, you know, come come visit us up at John yeah. Boy. You know, stop in the yeah. crib. Have you been by the office or anything? No, I uh, I had a chance last year I, that came up, and I couldn't I couldn't get there. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this year. I'm gonna try to come by. Um, you guys are in New Jersey, right? I'm thinking about come over. Um... No, well, we're in the city. We're in the oh, city. Oh, perfect. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna try to come by this year and see you guys. So that'll be fun. Yeah, we can set we can set you up on the VIP tour, and don't worry, lunch is on us. Turkey sandwich. Uh, it might not even be that good. You know. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think Jake ate all the profits. Oh, that, I'm going to have to talk to him. Yeah. Well, that's. I think he spent it all on his wedding, to be honest with you. Oof. That's what happened. Yeah. Call him out? Like, does he know this? Are you calling him out right now? No, not calling him out. I'm, just, I, I'm doing an unofficial audit of the company right now. There you go. I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to you. all the guys in the clubhouse, we say hello, and thanks so much for the time. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. You got it. For our outstanding one-of-a-kind producer, Robbie Scirocco, and the Phillies' new all-star shortstop, Trey Turner, I am Chris Rose. We'll see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.